Hello everyone, welcome back to Rolling Solo. My name is Adam Smith, and in today's video, we're gonna continue with this being part two of our unpacking video of Shadows of Brimstone, the Kickstarter. This is gonna be the Wave 1 to 2 unboxing. Uh, I currently own about half of the products in the video so far, but these ones right in front of me right now, I can tell you I don't own. If you haven't watched part one of this unpacking video, be sure to do that before you watch this one so that you kind of understand where we're at in the process of un unboxing or unpacking, I should say, this massive box that was delivered to me. Um, one thing I will note is it's called an unpacking video because simply I'm putting the packages on the table I'm Not going to open them up until later I will be doing unboxing videos where I actually show you what they look like and kind of rip through some of these packaging and stuff That'll be really fun, but in this video We're just going to talk about all the crazy things that are coming and I can also give you a little bit of Information about the game as we go along in case you're interested in ever buying this stuff at retail So what we have here in front of us is I got five different packs basically of uh, a mixture of heroes and enemies, some of which are the extra, extra large enemies that are massive. Of course, their miniatures are in separate bags that are not here right now. They're over in the corner, just over here to the right. But what you'll see here right now is a very much a Kickstarter exclusive hero in the Outlaw. This was one that was very difficult to get unless you were a Kickstarter one backer or happened to get one of the bigger pledges from the Forbidden Fortress. So. Many of these people watching the video right now are anxiously waiting to get this stuff if they haven't already received it because all this stuff is already uh, out into the world at this point. Uh, but this is a really cool hero, one of which I was, I'm really glad I was able to get. Comes along with uh, the standard character sheet. So when you're going ahead and upgrading your character, you get a character sheet, you got yourself kind of like a track. So when you go up on a level, you can unlock one of the first uh, of these four different columns. Um, and then once you unlock one, you're allowed to, on the next skill skill increase, you can jump to this one of the three that you didn't unlock or to the one after the one you unlocked. So it starts to build out like a skill tree, very much like a role playing game. And that's very cool because it allows you to customize how your hero is and you can change that from game to game. If you've never seen a hero uh, card for this game, that's essentially what they look like. Again, they obviously, the different types of heroes have different stats. There's a lot of numbers on this and stuff like that, which aren't worth getting into until we get into a playthrough in the future, but I will be playing this Shadows of Brimstone game through as a playthrough at some point here in the near future. I don't have a, a window of time to promise that, but I do promise you it will be happening. It's one of my favorite games. So this one here is the Outlaw. This right here is new to me. Uh, I don't either have, I don't have this as well, but I'm familiar with it. This is the Henchman Pack. I'm not too sure. Oh, actually, I kind of am. This one is the pack of the mule pack. So basically in this one, uh, you're going to get a whole bunch of allies and things like that. So you got blacksmiths and henchmen, and I believe these guys can actually come with you. So I think as you explore throughout the world, these individuals can come with you. The pack mule allows you to carry more items, cool things like that. Comes with a whole bunch of really cool cards taped to the back here. Uh, there's packs of cards in here. Again, it's going to be craziness trying to sort all this uh, so now we're going to move down to the lower three, which are some more monsters. And of course, like I said, their miniatures are in separate bags. So what we got here is a mixture of a whole bunch of miniatures. Actually, if you'll notice, there's some heroes dug in there as well. I think things like the Orphan uh, is in here. Uh, it looks like this is the Cowboy. Uh, right there, you can kind of see the top of it. So there's the Cowboy. I don't know what else is in here and stuff like that. And during the unboxing, I'll, I'll rip it all open. This is the Young Swamp Raptor. So the Swamp Raptor, I also got the Sand Krakens in here. You can see that sticking out over the edge. So a normal enemy sheet looks something like this. Normal enemy size sheet looks like this. If you get an extra, extra large enemy, the sheet in the back there, the big extra large green one turns into something like this. It's massive. You'll notice if I was to actually clear all this stuff off the front of the Sand Kraken, you'd have a very similar picture like this with uh, the normal side. This is considered the brutal, and every single monster in Brimstone has a brutal and a normal side, which again changes all the stats on it, makes it more difficult to encounter, gives it more bonuses, more abilities, all kinds of crazy stuff. It really keeps the game scaling with your character, so really cool. Uh, that's gonna be a really cool one to build as well. Uh, this one here has a mixture of, looks like mission packs. I can see some mission pack type, uh, just because I'm familiar with those, I can't try to see if I can actually see this. Yeah, so hero pack, dark stone shaman. Uh, that might be some heroes with some missions mixed in, I'm not too sure. Of course, we have some very, very new wasteland. Uh, these would be for the blasted wastes, I'm assuming, is where they're going to pop up. Um, behind it, there is a enemy, of which I probably would have seen 
There it is, Ancient One. All oh, right, this is like the most Cthulhu-like monster, or like monster in the entire game. It literally looks like a walking Cthulhu with a gigantic sword or ancient sword in his hand. It's pretty cool, and it is considered, sorry, an extra, extra large monster, so it comes on that sheet. Darkstone Shame is in the back. I'm not too sure what that is. Oh, that must be another character, and again, an ability sheet. Very cool. Okay, and over here we've got uh, the Darkstone Brutes. So we've got another enemy pack. Uh, again, got some more cards to go along with those. Uh, some stuff hidden in the back. I'm gonna have to sort through just to figure out what's in there. The burrower is a ma the burrower, if I'm saying that correctly, is a massive monster. Again, there's this brutal side. Uh, so I don't have this monster. I don't own this. Uh, a majority of the stuff here I don't own, although I do have the Darkstone Brutes. So I'm going to have to probably go through some of these and take some out and put some back in because i got to get rid of some of them. But that's essentially the five packs that look like this, at least in terms of packaging the style-wise. This is how these five came. All right, so let's move on to something else. Uh, the next thing to move on to probably would be the miniatures. This is where things get crazy because I, I kid you not, there is a ton. Um, what I've done as of right now is I've taken all the miniatures, uh, and this is not all of them, but I've put them into these IKEA boxes that everyone's familiar with for a calyx shelf. This is literally filled to the brim with miniatures. So uh, I've got one of these right here in front of you and another one of these black ones halfway filled off camera. Absolutely insane. I'll try to go through these as I can, but I'm not gonna go through every one. So you're gonna see as you get these in the game, you actually have to build them, but you can see the parts are you know, they, as, as the game has progressed, the parts have gotten easier to assemble. Uh, so they're not so small and detailed. I think the core two sets are the two toughest ones to assemble. And then from then on, the miniatures uh, started to become much more detailed and much more, um, you know, they basically their production went way up as things went along. Uh, so this Swamp Raptor looks like it's gonna be really fun to build. There's a card in the game that actually has three Swamp Raptors come into play. So I'll probably end up picking up two more of those so that I can have all three in the game. This one right here, it looks like the turrets from the derelict ship. Uh, the, so those look like the guns. Again, I'll try my best to name these as I go, but guys, you gotta forgive me if I can't because some of these I've never seen before. Definitely something from the derelict ship. It looks like a probe droid of some choice, uh, some of some type, sorry. It kind of looks like something straight out of Star Wars. So this thing would be floating around and I believe it has tentacle arms coming out of it, which is pretty crazy. Uh, we've got ourselves, um, what is this? This looks like, oh, very cool. This is the undead, uh, what is this guy's called again? This is the undead army. So this is like the, the colonel and his undead army. So you can see that there, he's got some wagon wheels. There's a cannon in the back there. Very cool, big base inside. Uh, this one right here, oh, this is a terrain set. I don't think I have, I don't have any terrain for Shadows of Brimstone. So this is actually just crates and, and basically debris that would fill up in the mine. So you got some tracks and things like that. That's kind of cool. This is nice to have. Um, this one right here, I'll definitely, if I'm thinking of, yes, I'll definitely be keeping this because I already bought one Guardian. These Guardians are like robotic four-armed monsters that come from Targa, uh, which is another world. And essentially, uh, there is a card that requires two of them. And from, from the moment I bought one of them, uh, it's always annoyed me that I didn't have a second one for that card that pulls two at the same time. So I'll be holding on to that for sure. Uh, this looks like the crazy tribe individual. So there was some type of a cult tribe or some tribe. I can't remember exactly what they were called, but this is definitely them. They've got all the feathers and the axes and all that kind of stuff. Very cool miniatures. And these guys, I think, were developed very much near the end of the, uh, the Kickstarter in terms of some of the minis to come out. Uh, these right here look like the werewolves. And we talked about that mission pack in the last video. So again, difficult to see, because I mean, it's a plastic bag, so I do apologize for that. Uh, but you can see the detail is fairly good. It's, it's pretty solid. And of course, they're, uh, they're all in spruce. There's a the heads there, kind of all broken out. So it's gonna be a lot of work to assemble stuff. But you know what, guys? At the end of the day, there's nothing more relaxing than sitting down, having a cup of coffee or your favorite alcoholic beverage, whatever, and basically just putting these things together. I mean, of course, you don't wanna glue your hands together, so maybe drinking too much is a bad thing, but, um, you know, I actually find it kind of relaxing. However, looking at how many miniatures I need to assemble, uh, it, it could raise the stress levels a little bit. Um, so these look like uh, sand monsters, sand crawlers of some type. So they're gonna be probably from the blasted waste, likely to pop out of the ground would be my assumption with those guys, not too familiar. Uh, succubi, Hellfire Succubi. These guys come from the Caverns of Cinder. We've talked about them before, nasty. They're gonna come after us. Uh, so a whole bunch of them. It's a good thing that I've done enough research to know roughly what these are with 
with minimal effort. Um, this is another of the Lost Army, or the Undead Army. From So this is likely, uh, the Colonel is who we probably pulled earlier. This is likely all of his band of merry men that go along with him. So each one's on a sprue. they got their guns right next to them and stuff like that. Very cool. These are going to be really cool. Like when I get all this stuff set up on the table, it's just going to be mind-blowing. Uh, these guys are super heavy duty and have lots of skulls, chains, axes, and machinery. My guess is blasted waste. That uh, would be my guess. I'm not sure. They could be scavengers. I'm not 100% sure on that. Uh, this right here is a bunch of undead... These might be the undead outlaws, I think. So they're basically like undead... Uh, yeah, they're definitely undead. There's skin and stuff like that flopping off of them, and they're, they got skulls and stuff like that, but I'm not sure. I can't... Legion of the Undead? Something like that. I don't know the specific terminology. Some of these are going to be resin, too, at some point. Uh, I, I don't know if it's going to be easier or hard for me to determine which ones are. Oh, these might be resin. So these might be some of the resin ones right here. Um, at least they feel like resin miniatures. So this could be them. Uh, so if that's the case, it's really cool. But they feel... These have a lot more detail to them. The, the bear, for instance, here, even though there's a lot of glare, you can see all the fur on them and stuff like that. Very, very cool. Sorry again, guys, about the, the packaging. I do apologize for that. Again, this is an unpacking. So if you're expecting an unboxing, if I was to rip through all these, this video would just be obscenely long. Um, these guys right here, oh, I, I kind of forget who they're, what they're called or where they're from. They're too new for me to name. They kind of have draped clothing, like capes and whatnot. Uh, they have some... Oh no, these might be the feral vampires. They're the feral, feral vampires, so there are more of them. I don't know if I got them all in the last one, but it's just more of them. Uh, oh, here we go. This is Belial. This is the big, massive monster. I have him. I own this guy. He's a big miniature. Probably stands about this tall off the table. So if you're talking sideways to the camera, he'd probably fill the camera range up. He's big. He's got some massive wings that definitely make him a lot taller. I already own him though, so he's one of the ones I'll be letting go. Uh, the ally pack that we talked about at the earlier of this video, there's your little, there's your donkeys and stuff like that. So obviously a different shade of color, which I really appreciate for allies so that you can at least differentiate them without painting them. That's nice. Um, these two are really easy, so I'll pull this out right away because I'm not going to open them. What these are is just a gigantic duplicate copy of the whole entire core set in red. So basically those two huge core boxes that I pulled out in part one at the very beginning. It's every single miniature that's in that game. I believe just enemies though, all in red. So it just allows you to give you some painting options. Essentially, it's kind of like a painter's dream. So you can maybe botch up your paint job at the beginning and then retry again, or maybe just have multiple shades of painting for different enemies. Uh, because some of these enemies are associated with different tribes and clans. So there's different paint uh, painting templates and styles you can do with these guys. This is a really cool miniature. They're getting to a bit, little bit bigger now. This is definitely some type of sand worm type creature, which would definitely be coming out of the last waste. I doubt that would be coming out of anywhere else. Um, let's see, what are these guys? Uh, they could be feral vampires as well. I don't see any heads yet, so uh, that's kind of scary. Uh, where, what are these guys? Okay, these are gonna have to go unnamed because I cannot see enough from the bag to tell you what these are. But if somebody is able to mention it in the comments below and maybe pin the time, that'd be great. I don't know what these are, uh, but it looks like a gigantic bag of guys with, they have capes and they have, look like they have muskets and stuff like that. So I don't know if they're supposed to be undead or not. Uh, what are these? Uh, oh, these are the uh, dark stone brutes. So I do own these already. So these will be ones I'm getting rid of. As you can see, this pile is mounting quickly. Uh, again, very. these guys are awesome. These guys remind me, like, the Blasted Waste, the way that they created these guys reminds me of, like, a super over-aggressive Tusken Raider from Star Wars is pretty much exactly what you could think of. It's kind of like Mad Max mixed with Tusken Raiders from Star Wars. That's essentially the style they went with that. And I really like it. I think it, it's really aggressive and looks really cool. Uh, so this could be another, this could be all the heroes in resin because this is a fairly big bag and I definitely think that a lot of these guys in here, although it's brutally hard to see uh, through the plastic, but you can kind of see a lot of these guys are human characters. Um, let's see if I can get, here's one right here that's actually kind of straight on with the camera. So it's a guy and his gun. So that's, that's just a regular human character. So it's likely that these are these look like resin to me, so they could be a higher quality, and that's really cool. If I actually kind of forgot, but if I got resin heroes in here, that's amazing. 
these are corpse piles. I actually don't have these. These are really cool. So there's corpse piles where you can end up with zombies in a particular map and essentially the zombie, the actual zombie miniatures will come out of the corpse piles. And if you don't destroy, incinerate, or get rid of the corpse piles, they just keep pouring out. So they're almost like spawn points for the zombies as the corpses kind of come up. It's pretty crazy. Uh, you get a bag of bases for plastic minis, which again, they detail which ones they go with, thank goodness, because that would be a nightmare to try to divide up. Uh, in the next box, so that's, that right there is one Ikea basket for a Calyx shell full. There's still half of one left. So like, in terms of how long it's gonna take me to assemble this stuff, good thing I already own half of it, because it would take forever. This is the sand kraken, hands down, no doubt about it, that is the Sand Kraken, so very, very cool. He's going to be high on the list uh, for me to assemble. These are the rats, uh, forget, uh, Scourge rats. Um, I can't remember exactly, they're rats, regardless. Um, and they also come with nests as well. Uh, I do own these ones already, so those ones I won't be keeping. Uh, Tredaren Raiders. So again, this is getting into stuff that would be included inside of Deluxe. Addition. So when we talked about Tradera, the deluxe expansion, this bag of miniatures would come with it. This is all like the Tradarian, um, Tradarian soldiers, legionnaires, and all that good stuff. There's a set of Tradarian raiders that's separate from that, but um, yeah. So anyway, and then this, of course, is the wonderful Colonel Scafford. This is an expand, smaller box expansion, but essentially it's a, a group of individuals that were mutated and now have tentacles coming into the lower portions of their bodies and their arms and legs, but they're nasty. They're one of the very tougher guys to run into when you're playing the game. Uh, these are the Void Sorcerers and their crazy Void Hounds, I believe. I do not have these, so these are really cool. Uh, that's going to add some pretty cool gameplay. This right here, these are the... Hmm, what are these called? Uh, I forget. Target. Ugh, I forget what these guys are called. The little droids or drones, uh, but they basically belong for Targa. They're for the other world, um, so they're very cool. They come with... Actually, those are not just those. They also come on the opposite side with some towers that are kind of like laser towers or phaser towers that will basically shoot at you. Um, we've got some more of the uh, tribe characters again. So you can see right in the dead center in the middle, you've got kind of a face. Uh, so it's all the tribesmen, their axes and everything else. This pile's getting ridiculous. Um, this is the Serpentman tribe. These guys are really cool. Separate expansion, not part of a... When I say separate expansions, I'm not. I'm saying like it's outside of the, those box expansions we were talking about. These are like small box expansions, essentially. Uh, these ones are really cool. There's six or seven, eight different tribes that these serpent men can come from. They all get different abilities. Very, very cool. Uh, this is the snake. The, uh, I forget if there's a specific terminology for it, but I have this one already. Snake is deadly. I think it's a three-headed snake. Um, not exactly the kind of thing you want to run into at the beginning of the game. Um, these guys right here are... Ooh. I recognize them, but I can't remember their names. They're very cool. I forget what world they're from. They could be from the Blasted Waste. Uh, they could also be from, they could be from space, but I got a funny feeling they're from the Blasted Waste, but I don't, uh, I'm not too familiar with that one all, all that much. So I'm gonna skip that. Uh, these guys are cool. These are like the undead astronauts from the derelict ships. You can see he's like in his astronaut suit, still kind of like roped in. Of course, once I put the bodies on them, there won't be a hole in the front. But uh, very, very cool. So it's like scary looking stuff. You end up on this ship a bunch of like undead individuals. And the last two are massive. So this one right here, when we were talking about that gigantic slug coming out of the ground with the Cthulhu-ish kind of look. Yeah, that's this guy. It's a full bag, three or four screws deep. Too much stuff to assemble. Outrageous. Uh, and the last one, which is Cthulhu, basically with a legendary sword, because you can just tell from all the tentacles and everything else. Um, once I assemble this guy, it'll be really cool. He's got wings. There's his sword right there, his ancient sword. Uh, he's kind of like in a running formation when you get him built. Looks really cool. But that that right there covers everything miniature-wise. Okay, so now what I'm going to try to do, and it might actually, I might actually have to stop it here because there's still just a few more things to talk about. So this is probably going to run to a third part, but we're done all of the out, all of the packages of miniatures that came in uh, wave one to two. So as you can see, it's an outrageous amount, um, but it's awesome. Like this is by far one of my favorite dungeon crawlers, and I can't wait to just have some spare time 
to sit down and start gluing this stuff. So out of all this stuff you're seeing here, if you were to cut it in half, essentially I own half of it. So I'm really excited that I don't have to build all of this because it would be an absolute nightmare and take me forever. I only have to go through this stuff I don't own, which is a nice, a nice thing. Uh, so anyway, that's it for this video, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I guess I will see you in part three of the unpacking for Shadows of Brimstone to complete the whole Wave 1, Wave 2 Kickstarter unpacking. So until the next episode, keep on rolling solo.